Welcome to the Future is Borderless podcast with David Nilsson. We feature top entrepreneurs and thought leaders from around the world, those who bring a global mindset and a unique perspective to their life and business. Now, let's get started with the show. Hi, David Nilsson here. I'm the host of this podcast. Uh, and the intention behind the Future is Borderless is to connect with business leaders from around the world who have what I refer to as a uh, borderless mindset. And this is where we share uh, ideas, best practices, new innovations, things that can be applied to both your personal and professional life, uh, ultimately helping us all to lead and grow in a rapidly changing world. Now, this episode is brought to you by Docs of Talent. Docs of Talent helps businesses to source full time, dedicated, highly skilled workers from all over the world. And as, as a result, these companies can scale faster, increase margin, and improve culture. To learn more about how Doxa can help you leverage borderless talent, go to doxatalent.com. All right, well, let's get into the show. My, um, my guest today is Alinka Rutkowska, uh, and Alinka is the CEO of Leaders Press, which is a USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestselling press where she creates books for entrepreneurs from scratch and then launches them into bestseller status. Uh, she runs a hybrid publishing house with traditional distribution via Simon & Schuster through which more than 500 entrepreneurs have been able to share their stories. And to date, I believe about 220 of those leader press authors have become USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestselling authors. Uh, as a result, she's been featured in Forbes, Entrepreneur Magazine, uh, the podcast Entrepreneurs on Fire, and numerous other outlets. And she has this mission to help 10,000 entrepreneurs share their wisdom with the world by 2030. And with that, uh, Alinka, welcome to The Future is Borderless. Thank you so much for having me, David. So this will be fun. I'm, I'm 100% certain that, that um, there are listeners who have fantasized about writing a book and have no idea where to get started. So I think this will be great uh, for them. Plus, um, I have this unique perspective because I actually wrote a book in 2012. Uh, and I, you know, I've got lots of great ideas that I think I want to share with the world. But having gone through the process trying to do it by myself, um, I'm not really sure if that's something I wanted to take on again. So I'm actually really excited to hear what you have to say today. Um, but maybe you could start by just giving us a bit of context of who you are and, and how you became the CEO of uh, or built this organization. Uh, like, how did this come about? Mm -hmm. From passion. I used to work in the corporate world. And after a while, I felt like maybe there's more to life than just sitting in a cubicle and doing spreadsheets for somebody else. And uh, slowly, slowly, I started realizing that uh, yeah, I have more potential than to do that, even though I was in a big time fast track management program. I was supposed to be one of the future leaders of the big corporation I was in. Uh, but it really it sounds glamorous, but it wasn't. So I managed to leave, got a pretty good golden parachute uh, as I took my exit and uh, Started traveling around the world, but also discovering what my passion was. And I found out what the self-publishing thing was and uh, published my first book pretty close to where when you published yours. It was the end of 2010 when I did that. And the book had a lot of success. I think it was beginner's luck. The royalties from that book brought me more than I was making in my corporate job which is nothing you should expect right now. It's unrealistic. But it did happen for me, and that really got me started and excited about the possibilities. And then when the book was doing so well, I was sharing my marketing methods online. Other authors started reaching out to me, asking if I could do for them what I was doing for myself. So that's, my, that's how my uh, you know, professional career in publishing started as a request <laughs> from the market. And then after years of doing custom things, I uh, took some entrepreneurship uh, masterminds and realized that I could package this whole thing. <laughs> and uh, that's how Leaders Press was born. Yeah, that's uh, not surprising to me that and talking to entrepreneurs that you saw this as, a, as a, an interesting opportunity. Now, my understanding is that you are primarily focused on business books, not exclusively, but that seems to be sort of where you've carved out your niche. Why do people come to you? Why are they looking to write a book? The main reasons are two. It's either to 
uh, grow their business. So they want a lead generation tool. Like for example, a podcaster who has um, a certain audience, but has nowhere else to send people to, to get them to opt in for something and to grow their list or any type of business looking for another avenue to bring clients to their door. A book is a great lead gen magnet because it's um, instant gratification. As soon as you sign up, you get it, you can consume it. So you don't have, you don't have to wait like as when you have to for a webinar or a seminar or something that you uh, have to fly to, uh, or even that's online, but there's some time period. So these are great, by the way. I, I enjoy webinars and seminars, but a book, you know, you're able to satisfy that desire immediately. Um, then the second uh, main reason why people want to do a book with us is because uh, they want to increase their authority. So they want to become the uh, influencer in their niche. Uh, they might want to get into the speaking circuit or they might already be in it and they might want to start charging more. Uh, we have an author who shared with us that's on the website. When you go to leaderspress.com, the first video, she says that now that she's a Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestselling author, she charges 25K per speaking gig. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Um, fun video to watch too. And uh, those are the main two reasons why active entrepreneurs want to do books with us. <clears throat> There's another reason um, for entrepreneurs who are. Um, sort of um, redirecting their life. Um, possibly they want to take a break, go on a permanent vacation, but they do want to have a, you know, uh, do you do want to share their wisdom with the world? They want to, they do want to share either with their family or with their inner, inner circle or with the entrepreneurial community at large, what they've done, uh, why, the lessons they've learned, so, for example, we did a book for the co-founder of DHL International for DHL's 50th, 50th anniversary. And that's really exciting to read, um, you know, who built that company and how it how it happened. Just great stories. You realize how the person who was initially both the CEO and the courier, you know, delivering the packages, yeah. <laughs> um, doing it all himself, then became a multi-billion dollar company. So that's you know, pretty impressive. Yeah. It's always fun to hear those stories too, because I think everybody starts out as chief cook and bottle washer. And then eventually as they scale, they take on those new rules, but it is always fun to hear those stories. Why, why do you think, I mean, uh, again, I, I said this at the beginning, I, I, I happen to spend a lot of time with entrepreneurs and one myself. I, I don't know any entrepreneur that has ever said, oh, I'm not interested in writing a book. It's something that just about everybody feels they have, you know, or wants to have a voice uh, or share their story or build their brand. Why do you think people, what, like what holds them back from actually getting that, that going? Well, internal blocks, like who am I to <laughs> do this? There are thousands of books written already. So I think it's sort of self-esteem issues a little mm -hmm. bit here. But, um, you know, these can be worked on. <laughs> I think they should be overcome because if you don't have a book, you don't have a, like you're really missing out on a, uh, on, on, on market share because there are people who will come in because they will read your book or because they will listen to your audiobook. Yeah. Um, they might not consume, you know, other types of media. Maybe they, you know, they're not on social media where they will consume ads. They're not uh, reading that particular magazine where you might be running ads, but they are looking for their solutions uh, on Amazon, for example, with their credit card hooked up to the platform. And if you're answering their question with your book, then you become the go-to person to answer more questions that they have and they'll, they will want to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. I mean, imposter syndrome is real. I hear this all the time. Uh, people just, it's not related to just books, but I think in general, a lot of people feel like they have not earned what, what they have or don't deserve what they have. Um, let's talk about Leaders Press for a second. Maybe you could share, I mean, it is obviously a hybrid publishing house. You're helping individuals sort of take that initial idea and actually get it into market. But can you maybe give us a sense for like, what is the actual problem that you're solving for them? Why are they coming to you? The main problem is or time or lack thereof or skill. So, you know, I want to have a book, I want to increase my authority, but I don't have the time or I don't know how to write. No. 
um or you know maybe they do have the time uh, but they but they realize that you know they have this who not how mentality uh they realize that uh, they will they will produce a much better book when it's done by a team of experts you know as opposed to writing something that is just so so like i think and many of our uh, clients agree uh that it's just being respectful of the reader, uh, providing them with the best possible writing, with the best possible organization. Um, that's just respect of the author um, to their audience. And, um, you know, the better the book, the better um, your image and your brand, and then the more you will achieve through it. Yeah. Tell me, uh, you know, when I when I go to your website, you know, you guys have lots of different services that you provide. But let's pretend that I was one of those individuals that wants the full package, right? Um, can you walk us through a little bit of the process that you would take me through, just to sort of illustrate um, sort of services that you're providing along the way? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a pretty wide range. Uh, so the main service we have, how we um, uh, got started is through a book from scratch. So you come in with an idea. Let's say um, you want to write about your uh, expertise in order to bring more people on board uh, as clients. So we'll work with you from that idea to your book out and published. Um, it can be either uh, out in uh, on Amazon on online retailers or uh, through our distribution partnership with Simon & Schuster, we can work on having your book in brick and mortar stores. Then um, depending on how ambitious your goals are, you can, uh, we can also work on getting your book on the Wall Street Journal bestseller link, bestseller list. That's very exciting. But then you're not only able to say that you're a published author, but a uh, Wall Street Journal best-selling author. So that does make a difference. Um, that's what that video on the main website is about. You know, when you have that accolade, you can start charging uh, way more than you were in the past. Um, as an add-on, I recommend audiobooks, especially if your goal is to grow your business because there's a, a segment of your audience that will only listen. So depending on what service you provide, um, I think it, the ROI of having an audiobook, of bringing in one or two clients off of it, uh, is really high, depending on how your business is set up. I know that uh, for me, for our business, it makes uh, a huge difference. Then uh, we do also marketing uh, for the books once they're out. We are a publishing house, but we uh, are able to provide marketing, you know, ongoing marketing after that and that's uh being on podcasts uh having articles out in various publications uh writing articles for the author to promote their book on their own website or linkedin so um you know we can really uh as we say on the in the headline you know you come in with an idea and you leave as a best-selling author so we've had people come in being uh, relatively little known in their industries. Uh, now, being Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestselling authors, and uh, you know, starting to get into you know the inner circle of people such as Richard Branson, for example. But you know, you can't do that if you just don't have anything um, that supports. Uh, your why, like why should somebody uh, like that talk to you? Well, because my book, <laughs> where I explain who I am and what I stand for, uh, you know, uh, got into the hands of thousands of people, was a number one Wall Street Journal bestseller. That's why you should consider spending some time with me. So there, there was a good reason um, to uh, have those other doors open that then allow you to um, get to the next level in your career. Yeah. I mean, the credit, the, the, you know, the, online, you would call it domain authority, but in, the authority that comes from being recognized as a, uh, a thought leader in a particular space, it's, it's hard to put a price tag on that. With, I'm just curious with so many people that you've worked with that have become best-selling authors, 
Like, what would you say? And I, I'm, I'm not asking to give you trade secrets away, but I, what would you say are like the the two or three sort of biggest contributing factors to helping someone become a best selling author? You do want to have a good book, meaning the content inside cannot be terrible. <laughs> you want the book uh, packaged well, because, you know, I'll uh, share with you a shocking, uh, sh shock, shocking insight. People buy the book without reading it first. <laughs> so they really uh, buy based on the cover, yeah. the title, the description. They have not read it. So yes, it can't be terrible because if it's terrible, then those reviews will be really bad. But it doesn't have to be a work of art to hit those lists. Uh, the books hit those lists because there's a, a huge promotional campaign behind them. Mm -hmm. They don't hit the lists by chance. Oh, I happen to self-publish this book. And look, you know, next the following week, it hit, hit the list. No, none of them. Maybe 0. 0.00000, keep going, 0001%. Maybe it happened once in the history of those lists. Doesn't happen. There, there are teams of people responsible for marketing that material, and you know those teams know that if they do that for a a book that's not uh, that's that's bad, you know that's poor in terms of writing, then obviously it will hit the, it will get the accolade, but you know it will be ruined in the reviews. So uh, you don't want to do that. You you need to have a decent quality book. But the the you know people hit the list because of the marketing behind it, not because of the quality of the writing. They win awards because of the quality of the writing, but they hit the list and get into the hands of uh, other readers because of the marketing behind it. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. In fact, it's funny if if I were to show you the side table next to my bed, there's about fifteen books stacked there that I have perfect intentions of reading, but I believe. There's 15 experts sitting there. So I haven't even read the books, but I already have this perspective that they are, um, you know, experts in, in their fields. So tell me about like how you guys differentiate. I mean, clearly there are other companies that help people write books. What is it that you guys think you do specifically well, or how do you differentiate against your competitors? Right. We guarantee uh, bestseller status. So when we do a Wall Street Journal campaign, we 100% guarantee that. Um, so you're, there's, there's no risk on the author's, on the other side, on the author's side, all the stress and risk is on us. And we've managed to get 220 authors on the USA Today or Wall Street Journal bestseller list. So we know what we're doing, but every time it is a bit stressful. <laughs> so that's a key differentiator. Um, no other publishing house 100% guarantees you that we do. Then... Uh, we have a distribution partnership with Simon & Schuster. So when you publish through Leaders Press, uh, you will also have the Simon & Schuster logo on your copyright page when you decide to uh, go through the traditional channel, which is a possibility. And uh, we are also a better deal financially if you want to get into those specifics and start comparing um, because... We feel that uh, we're able to deliver what we deliver and uh, what others deliver uh, at a at a better quality and a better price. So those are our key three differentiators. I love the fact that you guys have this catalytic mechanism. You know, if you guarantee uh, a result, right, that puts a little pressure on the person that's providing the service too. Most companies wouldn't be willing to do that. So I actually think that's very strong. Um, let's shift a little bit to just sort of trends that are happening externally. I mean, we're we're sort of living through the the digitization of the world at the moment. Like, I happen to still be sort of old school. I like to hold a book. I like to write in a book. But so many people are moving to digital formats and they're consuming a lot of content outside of books themselves. Like, how do you see books playing uh, a part in our future? Hmm. I don't think they're going away. You know, if you think about thousands of years ago, we had the first books on clay tablets or, uh, you know, other uh, paper, the first types of paper that were out there. And, you know, they were trendy then and they're still now. And I really don't think they're going anyway. Just like you said, you like the paper, the the the, the touch of it, the 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 sound of it, maybe the smell of it like I do. Um, 
this is gonna it's gonna stay even if we're you know more getting more and more digital people read on their phones mm. okay i'm not gonna comment on that uh, but there will be more reading that way um and the paper will stay as well there's just more means um of the same thing we talk we spoke about audiobooks so, you know still a book you still have to write it first um otherwise it's going to be a podcast and the density uh, that you get is not the same so there's much more thought and work and organization that goes into a book like as you said at the beginning um than into a podcast a podcast is fantastic because it's now like you have the latest and greatest uh, almost instantly a book is gonna you know it's gonna go through the publishing process it's gonna take a while so from the moment that you write this original thought to the moment it's out the thought might not be so original anymore but you know uh so so there so you want to be doing both but the book is the thing that will really um position you as the authority so uh i don't think it's go i don't think books are you know going to disappear for sure not authors will continue uh benefiting from the authority the book provides and and readers uh the audience will also continue to get that you know the most dense so to speak in quality the most possibly uh compact way of receiving information and also kids are still learning to read at school so i don't think that's going anywhere <laughs> that's true they don't learn they don't learn cursive anymore though so that's funny i'm I, my I four and a five year old and i was surprised as i was talking to one of the teachers that that's not something they're teaching anymore but i guess it makes sense since we're typing all the time well let's keep let's go along those lines a little bit um further so um you know, we talked about digitization, but there are new technologies that are coming out uh, all the time. Right now, uh, Chat GPT is uh, a very exciting uh, tool that people are really getting, uh, ex they're excited about. But if you broaden that to just AI in general, I mean, there's there's a lot that AI can do in the future. Do you, do you think that will fundamentally change your industry, your business? And do you fear that or do you embrace that? I think it will change the industry. I don't think it will fundamentally change it, but it will certainly change it. And we're embracing it. We're not fearing it. Um, it's really exciting. Uh, we want to be the leading publisher who embraces this technology. And uh, we already have team, mem team members, you know, having meetings like with uh, uh, the people who can tell us how to handle copyright, you know, all, all that. Uh, what what can be protected, what cannot, what has to happen for us to be able to slap an author's name on a book when we uh, work with AI. So these are conversations and meetings we're having this week. Now, <laughs> uh, you know, this technology just came out. We want to uh, start incorporating it into our services. So we're going, we have a project right now where we will be doing a book internally. And as soon as that's um done and we have a prototype we'll be able to offer this to our clients so uh, we're very excited about it uh and you know you need to embrace the technology or else you're just going to be left behind i don't think this is a fad you know it's, it's it's not like the you know the new uh the new pink that everybody has to wear now it's going to go away in a couple of months this is not going anywhere this is going to stay so and we need to learn to embrace it, as you beautifully said. Yeah, learn to coexist. Well, I, let's let's transition to you as a leader. Um, again, our our audience, our business owners, leaders. Um, just curious. I, I always say that they're they're everyone has their superpower, and I'm curious, what is yours? Hmm. I believe I'm good at being a visionary. So you know, putting together the uh, putting together the cool services, understanding what the market wants, meeting their needs, and uh, sort of seeing a little bit into the future. Uh, I'm also not uh, too in love with an idea that might not be a good one. So I'm more of a you know go fast, fail fast mentality. Mm -hmm. If uh, like I will put together 
uh, let's say 10 uh, types of services, half of them will fail miserably and I'm fine, next, 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 because a couple of them will do so well that we'll be riding that way for years. Yeah. Um, but I need a team around me to to implement that, which I have right now. I mean, I started from scratch. Right now we're 40 people. So it's starting to be only almost magic when during a team meeting, I will say, uh, you know, come up with an idea and uh, the team will just run with it. And then the next team meeting, I already forgot I had that idea <laughs> and they already implemented it and it's working. Yeah. So that's yeah, pretty great. I mean, then also sometimes they will say, you know, they will slow me down and say, you know, we need to follow the process. Um, but that's sort of like, you know, earth to be in the clouds. <laughs> But it's uh, it's great. So I mean, I can see that that's my strength, and uh, being surrounded by the right people, it does work. Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about your team. Are you guys in an office? Are you remote? Are you domestic, international? Like, how are you guys structured? We're a global virtual company, so we're on three continents. Um, everybody in their own space. So it's it, it's very exciting, you know, when uh, COVID hit and people couldn't move anymore, move around anymore. Uh, the first feedback we got was, wow, you know, you adapted so quickly. You're so well organized. Everything is working. Well, that's how we started. We never had an office, um, which, you know, sometimes I feel could be really exciting to have, but we don't. We try to stay together through other initiatives. Um, we have a space online where we can all be together. We uh, all connect through a sports app. <laughs> so we all uh, register the sporty activities that we do every day and have a challenge, see who does, mo who does more. So a way to connect outside. We do lounges uh, when we hang out. So there's no business talk. <laughs> yeah. um, so we do a lot of things for this to feel like a community. And now that we've learned to hire better, <laughs> and fire faster when necessary, when necessary. And to do all these team building activities, I feel like I'm really, really happy with the team. I feel like we have a really strong, uh, you know, 40 people behind this. That's awesome. I, you know, it's funny, this is something that I'm actually very passionate about. I have two businesses, uh, approximately 600 employees and no office oh. whatsoever. And, and it was hard because we went from a centralized environment in Seattle to now, uh, similarly, three continents and in, in trying to build culture and shift to a complete remote environment when you don't do it from scratch is very difficult. And right now, so many entrepreneurs are struggling with like, do I bring people back to the office? Do I lean into this full remote? Do I try to do both simultaneously in this hybrid environment? And people are really struggling with that. So it's great that you've, you've got a recipe that's helping you to build community because clearly that is so important. Um, you know, I know we're getting close uh, to the end of our time, but I, I wanted to just ask you one more question, and it's related to uh, just you as a leader. I've, I've found that, that most CEOs, at least really good CEOs, have both a dose of, of humility, but are also lifelong learners. So tell me, what is the, the number one way that you invest in yourself and what are you trying to, you know, do, amplify or improve today? Hmm. I've always invested in some sort of uh, masterminding or coaching. So I belong to, I don't know, five or six entrepreneurial groups throughout the years. And I still stick with a couple. Um, I also hired uh, one of the top people in publishing to be part of our team as a strategic advisor. So we're learning from him every day. It's very very exciting. What I want to amplify is, you know, learn more from the networks that I'm part of and really just more of, of, what, of what we're doing. I put together a vision board um, for the new year. Um, and when you look at it, it's, it's really amplifying the things that I already have going on. Mm -hmm. So it, it's uh, a testament to the fact that I'm really excited about the universe that I created for myself and I want to go in deeper and, and amplify that. Um, 
Uh, if you want specifics, I think uh, just getting better and better in terms of serving our clients. Uh, it's, you know, as you're growing, there's organizational stuff going on. So uh, we're working on initiatives to delight our clients further and further. I read a great book uh, that came out recently, and it was all about, you know, how to become the best in class. Mm. Uh, and, and that's that's what we're after. So I think that that's the main focus. Uh, really, operations are my main for, focus for this year. Yeah, I think I think the best in class customer experience will never uh, go out of favor. So we'll leave it there. All right. Well, we've been listening to Alinka Rutkowska, uh, the CEO of Leaders Press. Uh, Alinka, where can people go to learn more about the work that you do? The best place to go to is leaderspress.com. There's a really funny video of one of our authors uh, in Miami at a book awards contest. You want to see what she's saying. You can also go through a quiz there uh, where you can find out what type of book you should write. Uh, piggy, piggybacking on how we started this uh, podcast today. So leaderspress.com. Awesome. All right. And we'll leave that in the show notes for everyone there. Uh, thanks again for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, David. Thank you for listening to the Future is Borderless podcast with David Nilsson. Be sure to click subscribe to future episodes so you can hear from more top entrepreneurs and thought leaders. And we'll see you again next time.